So next, what we're gonna do is uh, build out a feature. So when users are looking for dates on a specific listing, that day picker will block out the dates that aren't available. So kind of like Airbnb does on their calendar picker here. It's a little bit tricky to build out, so I'm gonna show you the best way to build this out on Bubble. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is add in some plugins. So go ahead to your plugin tab and click add plugins on the right. And then go ahead and search for air date time picker. So we want the picker, not the dropper. So go ahead and install the picker. And then we also want to go ahead and add a um, date and time toolkit. So go ahead and search date and time toolkit. This is the one right here. So we're going to go ahead and install that as well. And then uh, that should be all we need to do for this feature. And I do want to call out just one more uh, plugin here that uh, it's a paid plugin. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do this with free plugins. But in my research of this feature uh, in the forums, this Calendar Grid Pro, which is paid, is going to let you build out this feature of blocking out dates um, natively to this um, to this calendar. And I uh, just wanted to like give you a heads up that that is another option for you. It also has some other features for customization. Uh, so that's an option for you if you're building this out, but I'm gonna show you how to build it out with uh, these two other plugins, which are both free. So the first um, plugin that we're going to work with here is the date and time toolkit. Uh, the date and time toolkit, what we're going to do is um, split date ranges uh, results. So what that's going to do is when we have a range of dates that's booked, so let's say March 1st through March 5th, we're going to add um, those that range into our database as March 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th. And the reason we need to do that is in order to uh, use this air date and time picker to block out dates, we have to give it specific dates, not a range of dates. So we're basically working with the constraints of this plugin and we're using this date and time toolkit plugin to make that happen. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is go into our data tab and into our homes uh, tab right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and um, add a new field and we're gonna call this booked dates individual. And the field type is gonna be a date and it is going to be a list. So we're gonna have multiple entries of, a, of dates on this field. So go ahead and create that. So here we have the uh, list of dates here that it's booked. All right, and now the next thing I wanna do is go back to our designer and our rental page and then we have our booking workflow. We're gonna edit this workflow. And now we're gonna add an action which is going to um, put data into that list uh, that we just created, that list of dates, when there's a booking. So go ahead and click action, go down to data things, and we're gonna go to split date ranges. And this is added because we added that plugin, um, the toolkit, date and time toolkit. So here we go. And now we're gonna add in the information that we're going to split. So we're gonna do a the start is going to be the result of step two's date ranges start. So this is the booking that we created. And this end is the result of step two's date ranges end. The units is going to be days. And then the steps is one. So what this means is um, we're gonna do you know one day each day one day in between each day this was a little confusing when I was first doing it um, but just one step in between each day uh, range option previous date time leave that and that is all we need to do so we've split the ranges and then now we need to add them into that field that we just created so go to data things we're going to make changes to a thing and what we're going to change is the result of step, um, sorry, we're gonna change the current page homes 
And then we're going to go ahead and go book dates individual, add list, not add, so we're adding a list, so we have to click add list. And we're going to add the result of step four, date list, uh, not date ranges, so date list. All right, so there we go. So that's all built out. And let's go back to our designer here. And let's test this out. So I'm going to open a new private window. Actually, first I'm going to go ahead and click preview here. And let's go to the home page. Oops. And I'm going to go ahead and just search for New York and three guests because I know we have sample properties there. Uh, the dates uh, don't really matter. I just want to search for all, all our properties. So here's the property that we've been testing with. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And I need to log in uh, so that I can make a payment. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I have a login that I've been using, sethpaytest at email.com, I believe. Let's see if that works. There we go. So now I'm logged in. And I'm going to go ahead and do a booking. Now, before I do that, I want to actually show you how to use the debugger in uh, Bubble. And the reason to do this is in case you uh, are running into an issue, I want to show you how to kind of diagnose that issue and figure out how to solve it. So what you want to do is while you're in the same window that you are you know, logged into your bubble editor, at the end of the URL in the version test, go ahead and add a question mark and then do version, I'm sorry, debug underscore mode equals true and go ahead and enter in. And now at the bottom here, we have our debugger. And I'm gonna go ahead and click step by step because what this, this is going to do is going to allow you to see each step uh, that's happening and all the data that's getting passed through in each step. So I'm gonna go ahead and now, uh, let's go ahead and make sure we select some dates that we wanna book for. Why don't I say the fourth through the seventh? And I'm gonna go ahead and book. And now it's going to pop up and say button book is clicked. So there we go. And we just want to say run next in order to have it go to the next event, which is charge the next user. OK, so here's charge the next user. We can see all the information that's getting passed through. So as an example, if the price wasn't what you expected here, you could see what is happening. So, oh, maybe, uh, you know, only $300 was getting passed through, which isn't correct. Then you know that, you know, something is wrong with the data here. And you can see everything that's coming through. And we're going to click Run Next, and it's going to send us over to Stripe. And I'm going to go ahead and enter in my credit card information to purchase. And it's just that Stripe test card, 4242, and so on. Any date into the future, any CVC. And then let's go ahead and pay. And it's going to send us back to Bubble, because that's what we've set up with Stripe earlier in the tutorial. And now it's going to pop up again with the debugger as after it loads. And here we go. It says our card was successfully charged. So I'm going to click OK. And now here we go. It says we are creating a new booking. Uh, so this is the information, the charge ID, the payment amount, etc. Let's go ahead and click Run Next. And now we're making a change to a home. So we're changing that current page home and we're adding that date range. And now we're gonna run next and now we're splitting the date ranges. So we're uh, starting on the fourth, ending on the seventh. This is the inputs to that split date ranges. And now we're gonna run next and make changes to that current home page, book date individual, add the list. And here we can see fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh were all added to our list. So that's perfect, it's all, act, all working correctly. Let's go ahead and run next. And that's it. So now it's done. So that's, uh, you know, we were running through the feature, making sure that it was working correctly and showing you how to use the debugger. Um, uh, debug mode equals true in Bubble. OK, so let's go back to Bubble here. And let's go to our data. And then let's go to our app data and then our homes. And then let's just double check, check that that worked. So here, our book dates individual is accurately in uh, that uh, field here. All right, so let's go back to our designer. And now what we're going to do is add in that new date picker here. So let's go ahead and go to our um, search. Let's go ahead and search for error date time picker, because that's a form that is now in our input forms. 
because we have the um, uh, plugin installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it, drag it right here. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do is rename it as uh, date range picker. And then why don't I say blocked? Okay. So actually, I don't even need to just say date range picker. Okay. So what we need to do here is I'm going to style it a little bit. And I'm also going to show you the stylings that worked for me because um, when certain of these styles aren't selected, I noticed um, the date time picker sometimes didn't work. But when I styled it in the way I'm going to show you, it worked every time. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, first thing, date format, I'm going to do uh, month, day. Uh, so that's just... Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and block dates. So this is uh, the field. And as you can see, it says it needs to be a list of dates, not a list of date ranges, which is why we did all the work that we just did. So we're going to block dates, current page, homes, booked dates, individual, individual. There we go. And and then I'm going to go ahead and say enable date range because I want people to be able to select a range in this date picker. The multiple dates separator, I'm going to go ahead and have a space dash and a space because I want there to be a dash in between dates when it's shown. Format 12 hours is good. And then these colors you can always change if you want. I'm going to leave them for now. And under style here, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and choose open sans, bold, centered, background style. I'm going to go ahead and choose a flat color and make it a gray here, like a very light gray. Roundness, I'm going to say five. And you'll see it doesn't show up until our published version of the app, but you'll see what, I, what I'm doing once we push it live or once we, pub, once we go to the live version. All right, I think that is everything that we need to do. So now let's go back to our page here and refresh. And there we go. Okay, so we have our date time picker. There is one thing I forgot to do. I wanted to go ahead, if we go up, placeholder text, text, I'm going to say choose dates. And now let me go back and refresh. So here we go, choose dates. So now if we click on this, you may or may not be getting an issue here where it's not opening up. And I'm not getting this issue. And this was happening to me earlier as well. And there is a solution. So what we need to do is go back to our plugin. And what we need to do is here, it says currently installed version. Um, under reading the reviews, I saw the owner of this plugin was saying that if you're having issues to go back to version 3.18 because 3.19 was having issues that they needed to fix. So just go into your plugin, go to your date, date time picker, check the version that's currently installed. And uh, maybe by the time you're watching this, 3.20 will be released, then it'll all work fine. But if not, Go back to 3.18. Uh, and then let's go back to our uh, page and refresh. And then let's go ahead and click choose dates. And there we go. So now it's all working correctly. Uh, so just a heads up, make sure that you are on 3.18 version or uh, maybe 3.20 or a future version will be working correctly. Um, let's go back. OK, and here we go. Let's double check if we go over. We can see April 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, we can't click on them and they are uh, crossed out because those dates were booked, which is awesome. And then here we can choose a date range, uh, kind of like Airbnb. So it's all working correctly, very cool. Uh, and then the next thing I wanna do is replace these date pickers that we have with this new date picker that we just did with those calculations for days. So let's go back to our designer we have our date picker here. So what we need to do is now let's go into our elements tree here. We have our total nights. 
And then we have our total nights copy. This is the, should say total price. So total nights and total price here. And the date time picker, I'm gonna push up. These I'm gonna move over because we're gonna end up deleting them, but I just wanna move them over for now. So total nights equals checkouts value minus check-ins value format as days. So we actually need to change this. Let's delete it. And I'm on that total nights uh, uh, text that we had already done early in the tutorial, but I'm gonna redo it to work with this new date picker. So here, we have our date range picker, which is what we called it. And here you can see that's what it is. And it's gonna be the value. It's gonna be the date range pickers range start. And then we're gonna do minus the date range pickers range end format as days. So there, what we're gonna do, it's the same thing that we had before with the start and end, but we're doing it from a range. Okay, now, same thing, check total price checkout value. We're gonna do the same change to the formula here. So now we're gonna go to, click on where it says checkouts value. We're gonna go down to the date picker, date range pickers, range start, minus the date pay, date range pickers range and format as days and then what we're going to do is multiply by the current page homes price so that's going to be the total price okay great and then when we go into our booking we want to edit that workflow and make sure we're pulling in the correct price uh, and everything here. So we unfortunately are gonna have to change some of these formulas here. So current page homes price, and then this is what we're gonna have to change again. Checkout values minus check-ins value format as days. So the amount is going to be the uh, date range pickers, range start, or sorry, range end minus date range picker range start and we're gonna have to go back i think i did start and end instead of end and start format as days oops times the current page homes price and we're gonna have to do the same thing for the app fee here so it's going to be the current homes price times the date range pickers range and minus the date range pickers range start and I'm trying to get rid of that there start times 0.15 and then it needs to be format as days and then we're gonna multiply by 0.15 because that's our app fee. And then this, the current page homes price times checkout values minus check-in value format as days is greater than zero. We need to change that to current homes price times the um, date range pickers range and minus the date range pickers range start format as days is greater than zero. So we wanna make sure that the price is greater than zero so that uh, we're not able to charge someone a negative amount. Okay, here we go. So we fixed all of that. It was a little bit tedious, unfortunately, but not too bad. And we're gonna go back and let's just check everything else. Everything else should be totally fine. Uh, result of step two, because everything else is coming from the results. Okay, and now let's go back to our designer here. And what we're going to need to do is go ahead and under the booking, uh, let's actually under the date range here, let's just double check. So start minus end, we need to fix this. So the total nights is going to be the date range pickers end minus the date range pickers ranges start format as days. And then under the date range uh, 
uh, total price, we need to go ahead and it's the end minus the start. So actually that was easy to switch. So the end minus the start format as days. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these two. So now we have our air date time picker. And let's go back and refresh. And here we go. Here we are. So we have our price. We can choose our dates. So here we can see the dates we can't choose are blocked out, which is cool. And then let's choose the 21st through the 23rd. Oops. 21st through the 23rd and go down. And we are not seeing that. I think, okay, I know why. We have to go back to our editor because we had some conditional uh, d data here. And there we go. So this is not found. We need to fix this. So the conditional data, because this was based off of those ranges that we just deleted, is going to be when the, we're only going to show this when the date range pickers value, actually range, and the range is not empty. That should be all we need to do. And let's do date range picker here. And we're going to do when the date range pickers range is not empty. And we're going to do one more thing. And the date range picker uh, range and minus the date range pickers range start is um, format as days is greater than uh, zero. So we need to be booking for at least one day. And let's go ahead and do the same thing on the conditional here. It's not empty. And let's um, not empty. And then we're going to do the same thing we've been doing. So a little tedious, but we just got to do it. The ranges and minus the um, and date range picker ranges and minus the oh, minus just gotta have minus as a whole its own thing date range pickers range start format as days is greater than zero okay so now let's go back and refresh let's make sure that this is working so let's choose some dates let's choose the 20th through the 23rd there we go three nights 597 total price. Let's go ahead and book. And we have our debugger on, so we're going to go ahead and run next. Run next. I'm going to go ahead and pay. And oops, something is definitely wrong with our total amount here. So we got to go back and double check what we did wrong. All right, so we have our total amount. The total price here is working. Uh, let's actually debug this. So I'm going to go ahead and book. So we're going to run next, charge the next user. And the amount here, uh, this formula, current page homes price times the range end minus the range start. My, uh, okay, so here we go. We're multiplying by the price twice. So we don't want to do this. We only want to multiply by it once. So um, let's cancel this. Actually, let's see if I know how to cancel this. Um, we may have to go through and do it. Uh, actually, let's just go back to the editor. And under bookings, let's edit that workflow. Uh, this one's going to have to be changed too uh, for the date range, but charge the current user. So current page home's price, let's go ahead and delete that. There we go. Date range pickers start format as days. So price times the number of days. That's fixed. Under create a new booking, the date range, we're just going to have to fix that. So it's going to be the... Uh, the date range pickers range. So that should be all we have to do there for date range pickers range. All right, so go back, let's refresh. 
And we're gonna keep that debugger on. So let's go ahead and choose some dates, the 21st through 23rd, two nights, let's book. Let's run next, let's run next. And now 398, so that is accurate. Let's go ahead and put in our Stripe test card. And let's go ahead and pay. It's gonna send us back to our debugger. Okay, we were charged successfully, and here we go. So we're creating a new booking. We have our payment amount. We have our date range here. We have our current page home and application fee. Okay, great. Let's run next. We're making changes to the home. We're adding that date range. We're splitting the date range, and then we're adding the individual dates there. Okay, great. And it's done, and I'm going to just refresh. And now, if I go to their calendar, March 21st, 22nd, 23rd is not available. Awesome. Cool.